Okay, so I hope uh, you can hear me in, in Zoom. Um, I'd like to now put things we heard into perspective and we had wonderful uh, contributions here, but we turned this into a project and uh, and the story of this is that we had the call, Andreas Holte on his webpage said there's money uh, and, and then uh, NMR thought about some stuff like hope development, which would also be important. But then uh, Dave Stewart really said, shouldn't we do something together towards fragment screening? And um, and then, I mean, uh, as uh, um, um, Horkheimer, the, the better argument beats the good argument. And this was the stronger uh, idea to put this together. Um, we come from, uh, is this working here? No, probably not. How do I go further here? Um, the people that, uh, the, this core people of Instruct is called Integrated Structural Biology. So this is our core business. And then we teamed up, and that is also by way of design of this project to team up with other European research infrastructures, which is EU Open Screen, whose core business is to look into libraries and screening and develop MedCam. And then we have partners for MedCam. And, uh, and then another core activity comes from people that look into this algorithms that Frank uh, was talking about. Maybe we get an algorithm that can do something. Uh, so this is one part of bringing people together. The other one is that for all of us, SARS-CoV-2 was a decisive moment in time that actually changed the way we think we had an obligation to society to actually do something. And if I have a 15 million worth uh, NMR 1.2 gigahertz, which is going to be delivered in May to the University of Frankfurt, and it's not good for doing anything against SARS-CoV-2, I might have an issue explaining to the funder that I'm worth uh, to get such a, a piece of equipment. It's, it's taxpayers' money at the end of the day. So, <clears throat> so I have this slide that uh, Srida uh, uh, made for me, which actually shows the uh, contribution of the structural biology community worldwide to understand the structures that make the virus. This is all either X-ray or pyrene. And the very first one is the main protease that was submitted to science by Hilgenfeld on February 17th. Um, and he had already solved the structure of the SARS-CoV-1 main protease. So he picked it out of the fridge and was very well six weeks after, after Wuhan he had the major target that we were solved. And then came uh, here the polymerase and all these other things. So this is the structural catalog that the structural biology community has put up worldwide. Um, and um, in NMR, in a project that we coordinated, we were the first to actually put the secondary structure atlas of the RNAs that are not translated or that represent key frame shifting element uh, onto the table. This was before shape, was before DMS, before, before anything. This was we started March, end of March and in August, we had submitted this. 20 different RNAs all being made, distributed worldwide for other labs to contribute to the assignment. We had made all the structures in Frankfurt, all the samples, and distributed this. And this was mainly Anna Wacker and uh, Lia Weigand, Anna Wacker is here in the room. She was spared the project. And by NMR, we will continue to actually solve RNA structures of this virus. Because you can do this by NMR. And um, Mike Summers is the NMR hero who has done a similar uh, uh, 3D structural space for the HIV RNA components. And I remember talking, seeing you talk a few years ago, where he would also add by NMR one or the other structure. 
And I'd like to say, because this is also important for this community, is that this fuzziness here is not because we are too stupid to make these structures real, but Enema always has included this order of niches. So uh, RNA has these loops, and these are the ones that you can target because this is open space for targeting. Um, but um, we are not going to, um, yeah, I, I should say some more words because it is. This is also important. We heard Aztecs talking about, you know, money and so forth. So we screened these uh, 20 RNA constructs and we utilized the library that Frank Finissens actually developed within the project that Tassos coordinated in INEX and INEX Discovery. Um, we basically developed this PSI forest library and for some was sitting there and we tried to do our utmost. And this library is interesting because it is built for follow-up chemistry. This is why it is good. It is poised for follow-up chemistry. If you look at these, all these libraries are already linked to low affinity fragments by five different ways of chemistry. It's only five different ways of peptide chemistry or reductive amination or book back or hardwick coupling, or this kind of stuff. It's easy. So you see, you can immediately pull the line here and I can reassemble the stuff. And um, so we took this library. Unfortunately, Inami doesn't talk to me anymore. So I'm not getting an answer by Inami. They don't sell me compounds. So I have to find another compound specs that actually is now willing to sell me these compounds. And I have reassembled this, and for 2,000 euros, you get 30 samples from USB if you want. So it's all available there. And so we screened this, and per sample, we, uh, we screened in mixtures of 12. We need 51 minutes to conduct four different sets of animal data that tell us <clears throat> that tell us sound binding. Uh, so uh, if you if you if you calculate an hour measurement time at something that's easily 400 euro per, uh, per hour, probably something like this, you know, approximately the costs. You can purchase, you can you can get from the commission, you get 1,000 euro for one day of measurement from the commission. So basically one RNA screen is three days of screen. So I would get back from the commission 3,000 euro to conduct uh, conduct such. Um, and uh, this can so uh, then we have these hits, we um, uh, categorize this, and <clears throat> we only didn't stop uh, doing RNA, but in this consortium, we also uh, looked at 25 uh, different proteins, so the coverage of 85% of the proteome, and <clears throat> NMR can, of course, also look at insulin disorder proteins and uh, uh, regions that are intuitively disordered. So this is one of the advantages. All of this is deposited. You can get the proteins if you ask us to send the proteins into the plasma to our express protein. And at least our for example, doing this. We sent them out to the world at the time. So and it was published in 2021. Now, and these are then, uh, the hits, these are always the 768 INEX discovery, PSI voice library. And uh, we also find in between five and 154 hits. So we have enormous hit rates asking for what is the criterion for a hit. You can, you can lower or higher this, and, and you, are, you are lost with the amount of data that you have. You would like to have better, more stringent criteria. Now, <clears throat> this was kind of the onset of the existing knowledge that went. I mean, we heard COVID, uh, COVID project. This is the NMR side of it. And so <clears throat> we took this um, and argued in the proposal that integrated approaches, integrated approaches to fragment based drug discovery are crucial for the ongoing development of the technique. Um, and that there are several limitations for fragment-based drug discovery, including costs and access to instrumentation. This comes to see kind of for you. We are these European research infrastructure, so our raison d'être is always that finally we will provide 
access to the communities. So the scope and that was foreseen in this tech project, as Andreas Wolfel told us, is to develop instrumentation. So we team up, for example, Anna Martin Sofis Kuka to develop instrumentation, to develop computational methodologies and fair data principles, and then also workflows for the particles in the deep Now, <clears throat> I try to uh, put this up. Uh, Steve is referenced here in 1996. We heard about this. The, um, the idea dates back to an earlier publication with fragment linking. And you see that there was a long history of fragment based truck discovery in industry more so than in academia. And it was a game changer that you can screen an entire library by X ray crystallography within a night. So you can screen a thousand compounds in the sun and diamond uh, and Martin and uh, colleagues were, were tiling this. And that actually kind of blew away, or it's just mind boggling for NMR, is that you can screen the entire library, get the coordinates within one night in time, if, as we heard, this is correct. So this happened somewhere here, already at least linked or associated to these European projects. At least we heard, I, I heard from these kind of initiatives in the in INX. Uh, and we had Veneto Flux here, and um, and then here is the COVID moonshot project. Here is, as we heard before, published the cryogen based uh, fragment based screening by Aztecs, published here 64 compounds being screened. And, um, and we see this is ongoing and it was really uh, developed at the right time to be um, impactful for SARS CoV 2. And now we are here as of uh, 1st of Feb 2023, we have the start of our European project. Now, uh, the consortium, um, I'm actually quite proud, I'm happy that we could pull so many people together. I mean, the downside of pulling very many people together is that we divide communities by many people, the less people the larger the the pot, but it is actually worth to bring it together. And there are kind of the usual suspects, which are infrastructures, um, academic infrastructures in NMR, mass spectrometry, electron microscopy, x ray. Uh, but then there are also the list of um, industrial partners. And so um, the, you know, the job of our project is to pull these two worlds together and exploit um, the most out of it. Now, the project was initially um, very much written by Natalie Haley, and, and I also did write some sentences. But now I really, now I try. Sema, Sema Tilo too. This is the coordinator of the project. And um, we want to revolutionize fragment based truck design in, by developing new instrumentation and workflows, uh, by generating fair data, by ver uh, verifying through external validation uh, and open competitions for evaluation of AI approaches, and by offering new developments for access to EU European RIs. Project is supposed to be running 36 months. It will be running 36 months. It has a budget of 10.3 million, 8.3 million from the European Commission, and the rest comes from the UK. Uh, and internal funds has 24 parties, 19 beneficiaries, five associated partners. And this is kind of where we want to go at the end. I will come to this in the end. Um, we have this um, figure in the in the in the project. If, if you see what Frank said and what I said, this actually represents the way it works by the requirements. There's one line that conducts X-ray screens, and they generate 3D data, and that feeds into compound design and candidate compounds. 
And then in other words, currently up to now NMR that generates data on affinity and binding epitopes. And that feeds these circulars and identifies drug candidates. And coming back, we used the same library, the DSI Forest Library, um, to actually go either this route or that route. Um, now, in the project, reminder for all of you, we have within when we wrote the proposal, we have prioritized four different targets that we want to work on. And three of the targets will be the proteins will be made in Frankfurt. And this is the macro domain, NSP3B. This is the main OTAs, NSP5, and ORF9A and TD. Um, and these are the conditions. And then that will, in, the, in work package six, we have already started to collect all this data. Uh, so that in this, we can see all the data and can start thinking about this. Um, and we in fact would also work on medicinal chemistry for those two proteins, and we work on medicinal chemistry for RNA, which is not the topic here. By NMR, we have also screened these 25 proteins and identified 311 hits and used um, FTMAP procedures to actually predict binding sites over all the uh, proteins where crystal structures um, have been available. So we use our data, epitope mapping, and actually generate binding proposals that hopefully can be validated. Now, here I just show to you these hits, for example, for NSP3B out of the DSI Forest library. And uh, the idea would be that the MedCam uh, colleagues actually start out with these fragments and think. Uh, on strategies how they can and use the existing structural data that is there and really develop the net can uh, from these hits. So the point, as Frank also said, is probably not to conduct additional and additional and additional screens of completely unrelated compounds, but use the existing knowledge to forward this knowledge to new compounds. Maybe you have to do another screen, as, uh, as Steve said, to validate that this where is a good example? Uh, I don't know. That this really makes sense and is not kind of obvious. So you take a close friend of this compound to see whether you can support this initial idea. But you take close friends, you don't take completely uh, unrelated compounds. And here are <clears throat> the main 48 hits. And these have already been uh, showcased in many cases in the moon short uh, project. Um, and here I show you uh, as, as this NSP5 has been screened uh, by using the same library with NMR and X-ray and took uh, the diamond uh, data set and actually show to you and what you see here in S1, S1 prime, S2, S3 are the predictions of possible bindings uh, it's as predicted from FT map. And you see that these very small, 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 small chemotypes like ethanol or benzene in FT map actually go either to S1, S1 prime, S2, S3. And the compounds that they are being identified as, as hits typically bridge two of the binding pockets, but they these fragments don't bridge four. So the name of the game for what for also what we do and probably diamond also does is to actually fill the four pockets. So, um, so what we do in NMR, the moonshot experiment by NMR has a KD of uh, 460 micromolar as evidence, and you can get this data very rapidly. So we, we get affinity by NMR very rapidly, and we don't need all the way a message in fragment, but still it's nice, nice piece of information to know the affinity very well. Um, so the, uh, the project is broken down into six scientific work packages and four work packages that, uh, that try to uh, tell the good news and uh, 
conduct training and uh, prepare for infrastructure readiness and sustainability. And I will guide you through very briefly uh, the overview of the six drug packages. Um, so this is what at the end of the project we claimed to have wanted to achieve. So we have a target, we have the compound library, and we screen in parallel by the three major structural techniques and generate federated data that has annotations assigned and as much information as we can get. We want to use mass spectrometry and artificial intelligence to help us in cross-validating and in the federation. I should say mass spectrometry, we said it's a cross-validation technique in, in terms of writing the grant. Part of the grant, as I show, was also to try to multiplex mass spectrometry. Um, let's see how this goes. And then uh, these federated data go into AI-supported compound design, maybe AI-supported photosynthesis, new compound synthesis, candidate compounds that undergo the circle. And the hope, as Frank said, is that the number of these circles is 2.3, so get uh, within a week <laughs> a nanomolar inhibitor. Um, so basically, the point is seriously is to minimize the numbers of iterated circles as much as one can. Um, work package one is led by Hassan in Grenoble, uh, and it's uh, really improving some of the hardware and methodologies in X ray fragment screen. Uh, work package one will also define the optimal workflows for conducting fragment screens by X ray at ambient temperatures and facilitate analysis and development of the results through an open cloud platform. And through these developments, we open FBDD to new classes of highly challenging targets, including membrane proteins. Um, so this is what we wrote. Uh, work package two is the NMR work package. And uh, together with UCA, we will be developing new NMR technology. And that is mainly OAP technology. And one of the parts that come up here the entire time is the use of the NMR active 100% natural abundance growing isotope that is, of course, not there in uh, real life. So it is a sort of spy that we can use. Many of the compounds are chlorinated. And uh, in Frankfurt, we will develop a dual detection photon and fluor uh, probe uh, with hopefully 30 microliters, where you can do uh, photon or fluorine screens at the virtual same time, because you can run these, uh, these two experiments independently, you can pulse a sample both on photons and fluorine at the same time, because the screens don't talk to each other. We will have in Florence, we will have a TCI cryopod for 1.2 gigahertz, which has also fluorine, which we will incorporate uh, either into the plants or for example, in thymine. So this is ligand based, so we look at changes of the ligand signals. Here we look at changes of the proteins. Then, as uh, as Marcus already said in uh, in uh, Utrecht, we will develop a probe for solid state at 800, which also has fluorine. And the colleagues at SciTech will develop a uh, bioprobe fitting into a linear bioreactor to actually also do in vivo screening by animal weather compounds that we work also in cell NMR. A work package three led by a diamond is to, um, uh, to uh, improve single particle cryogen. Uh, this will include new instrumentation for robust and automated preparation, prototype automated cryo storage and sample loading robot, um, and here again, development of AI tools to automate data collection. Uh, work package is led by Madrid. Um, so this is um, how we actually interface with all data deposition and data generation. Five is led by University of Leeds um, to establish mass spectrometry as validation tools for fragment binding. And here comes also the point in addition to robust medium methods for fragment screening 
including multiplexing, will be evaluated as part of this activity. And the work package six, led by EU OpenStream, is um, a four medicinal groups um, that will work on NSP3B, NSP5, NSP10, and NSP16, and NSP the nucleocapsid protein to actually take these initial fragment screens to higher affinity binders. And uh, that's work package seven. And with this, I have um, taken you through the project. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for your attention.